So you want to use your Zoom H5 to connect it to your iPhone or smartphone for better audio in Clubhouse as well as phone calls and some other things. You can even record conversations with the setup that I'm about to share here. Now, if you don't want to do something complex like that, you can also just use a setup like this, which is a Lavier microphone into a splitter between microphone and headphone port and use that. That is also described in another video that I made about different microphone setups as well as technical setups that you can use to basically improve your sound quality in phone calls as well as podcast recordings, Zoom conferences, or other things that you are connected to with your smartphone. So that's linked in the description below. But in this video, I'm specifically talking about the H5 and how you can set up these handy recorders to be able to do a mix minus with phone call integration or use them in a clubhouse call with better microphones that are, for example, the Shure Beta 57A that I have sitting right here. So let's get down to business, talk about why you would want to do this, what you will need to do it, and then also a full walkthrough of the settings and setup of this whole kit. Now, first up, is it actually worth it to worry about this much gear if you just want to sound a bit better in a clubhouse room? And I would argue that's not the only reason, but it is a good one. Sounding better in this environment where sound is the only thing that is transmitted is definitely a big plus. However, with a setup like this, you not only get the chance of adding a better sounding microphone, you might do just that with a Lavier microphone and the adapter that I showed earlier, but you can also integrate other things like, for example, a guitar, a sound pad, sounds from your computer, or similar things by using a mixer or something like this audio recorder. So those are some of the reasons why I think it's definitely worth it to check out how these setups work, how you can set it up as a mix minus set so that you can still monitor your own audio and also hear the people that are talking in the room. Now to get all of this set up, we have to think about lots of different aspects. And on the desk right here, you can see pretty much all of it. Of course, we will need the Zoom H5 or any type of handy recorder that has the setting or the capabilities of panning the audio to either the left or the right channel. I will have another video specifically about the Zoom F6, which is the audio recorder that I nowadays use. However, there you actually have routing options, which you don't have on recorders like, for example, the H5 that I have here. Here, I can only decide whether the sound should come out of the left or the right channel, and that's exactly what we're going to use for this mix minus functionality. So that's the first piece of equipment that we need. And of course, it would make sense to have a XLR microphone, or you can also just use the microphone that is built into the H5 or similar recorders. With that, we'll also need a couple of adapters for the smartphone. In this case, I have a splitter so that I can charge and use the audio capabilities of the lightning port at the same time. This is kind of optional. However, I definitely recommend having this if you plan on doing longer calls or rooms on Clubhouse, for example, because your phone's battery most likely will die at some point. Then we have the Lightning 2 audio jack adapter. This is the one that everybody is complaining about, that the new iPhones don't have a headphone jack, but this is basically the way that you want to go there. And then we have a couple of headphones with a mini jack connection that you can connect to the Zoom H5's headphone port on the side. This is so that you can monitor yourself and everybody in the room as well. And now we are getting into the area of more specific things that you need to connect something like the H5 to your smartphone because your H5 has a line out port here on the side. And the problem there is that this line out port, generally speaking, is too loud for your smartphone. And that is the reason why most of the time, if you connect just the line out to your microphone port, then you would actually end up having some issues because the smartphones usually just cut that out because it is too loud and would potentially damage the internal electronics. So that's why that is the case. However, there is a device called iRig2, which is capable of turning this type of signal, so a line signal, to a basically a microphone signal that can be worked with on your smartphone. So that is the iRig2 that we're going to use for this setup. But something to note here is that the iRig2 is actually made to connect to guitars. So that's why there is a guitar label right there. And the jack here on the side is actually a 6.3 millimeter jack and a 3.5 millimeter jack. The good thing about this 3.5 millimeter jack is that this is a headphone port, which usually fits any kind of headphone that you might have. 
this is a port that can only monitor the audio coming from the phone. So for example, if you're in Clubhouse, this would give you the sounds of the Clubhouse room. However, you cannot monitor yourself while you are connected to this port. We will care about this problem down the line in this setup, but then there is another setup with a mix minus feature where you actually route everything through your H5 and that way you can monitor yourself and you can hear everybody in the room talking. However, we have a 6.3 millimeter jack as the input as well as the output of this device and that way we will need a couple of cables that convert that. Now you can get just a simple headphone adapter cable that converts from 6.3 to 3.5 millimeter. However, I went with cables that are mono 6.3 millimeters on one side and then mono 3.5 millimeters on the other side. Then you'll also need a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack to two mono jacks. So this is a left right splitter cable. Then we also have this 3.5 millimeter mono to stereo jack. So this is a stereo jack and on the other side we have a mono signal. And that will be useful to be able to hear stuff on both ears and not just one. And you'll see why that is important down the line in this setup. And lastly, the Zoom H5 has a 3.5 millimeter input jack up here at the top. If you don't have that in your device or you don't want to use that because you still want to use the built-in microphone up here, then you will also need a XLR to mini jack adapter. For example, the Rode VXLR Pro. However, for most cases, the Rode VXLR would actually be just fine. So this is also optional, but it might be necessary depending on your setup. And now that we have run through all of this, let's hook it up together and see how it will actually work. Now, first things first, I would say we take the part that is connected to the phone and that would be taking the 3.5 millimeter to lightning port adapter and connecting that to the TRRS so that it is connected like this. I am not going to be using this adapter in this set just to make it a little more overviewable. But of course, you can just hook this up to your phone and then on the other side, you would hook that up to your power source. Something to note here is that some of these adapters or sometimes there will be a bit of a hum on your audio because of the electricity that is also going through this cable. So if that's the case, maybe unplugging is the fastest solution and other solutions might be to try different cables, different wall plugs and such ideas. And also when you're looking for these adapters, it is important to look for one that has the ability to do phone calls and also the listening part of headphones. Because if you just get the headphone compatible thing, then this might not work with the setup because obviously you also need to send audio to the device. So that is something to be aware of. Now we are not going to use this in the setup just to keep it a little smaller. In the next step, we are actually hooking up the part where we want to send stuff. And for that, we are going to use one of the 6.3 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter jack cables. Hook that up to the guitar part because that is the input on the iRig 2. And the other side, we can hook that up here to the line out port. Now with all that connected, the H5 turned on, the iRig hooked up. There is nothing to turn on, so that's good. Set the gain to the lowest and the phone with an audio recorder, we can actually just up the gain here on the internal microphone. And because I'm not directly speaking into it, I'm setting it to a level of 10. And now you can see a audio signal, which is actually coming here from the Zoom H5. This is the top capsule. So if I tap this, you'll see a very strong signal on the smartphone. So this is a basic way of setting up the iRig with a H5. And with that, you can actually just use your headphones and put them to the side. You have your headphone jack 3.5 millimeter and you can hook that up here down below into the iRig 2. And now you could actually hear a phone call through your headphones and the person on the other end would hear the audio coming from the Zoom H5. And in this setup, you can actually also use a XLR port. So using the low port right here, hook a XLR microphone up. Maybe we turn the down the gain on the internal microphone or the inbuilt microphone here on the Zoom H5. Activate port number one, up the gain there. And now if I tap on the microphone right here, you can also see a signal there. So again, you can use any microphone that you have connected to this audio recorder right now, connected through the iRig to the smartphone as a microphone in your phone call or clubhouse room. With the headphone connected to the headphone port of the iRig, you can hear what other people are saying, but you cannot monitor yourself. For that, 
we'll have to add a couple more cables to this setup. Now to achieve a setup where you can monitor yourself and hear everybody else and also potentially even record those conversations in a phone call integration, we'll actually need a bit more room here because we will actually have to add a couple more cables. And in this case, we have the 6.3 to 3.5 mono cable part two. And this one here is going to be plugged into this port right here at the top, which is the amp out. In this case, this here becomes the port where we are going to receive all the audio coming from the smartphone. And for that, it's actually important right here on the side of the iRig to set this little switch right here from through to FX. Because if you set it to through, the signal that you're sending into it will also come out of the other end here at the amp. However, if you set it to FX, then you will only get the audio coming from the phone out of this port right here. So that is very important to set this to through. The gain again, I have set it to zero or the lowest gain setting on the device that is possible. And you might want to increase that gain depending on the application they use or the environment you're in, as well as the people on the other end might give you a couple of cues in terms of what you might want to change. Now we also can unplug this port right here for the headphones because we're not going to use this port, but it is available if you choose to use it. Now we can set this down and now it is time to connect this end right here. So this is the mini jack connection from the amp out on this device. And in my case, I can simply connect this to the stereo input right here at the top of the Zoom H5. This is the place where if you don't have this input, you might want to use something like the VXLR Pro or the VXLR, and you simply just take that, connect it to this adapter, and then you could also connect this to the port at the bottom here of the Zoom H5 into a XLR port, and connect that and have that active right here. But in my case, to keep the set a bit smaller, I'm gonna not use this in this setup and we are just going to hook this up to the top port right here, the stereo input. So now we have all of this set up and let's make it so that you can actually see this a bit <laughs> because it is rather cumbersome, let's say that. So what we have set up right now is we have the Zoom H5 and a XLR microphone connected to it at the bottom. The line out port here on the side is connected to the iRig on the guitar port, which is the in port. And the iRig on the other side is connected to the Zoom H5 again. And in this case, this is connected to the input of the stereo capsule right here at the top. Now we can set the gain right here to something because we don't know yet how loud the sound will be coming from the smartphone. However, we will have to actually also activate port one and of course the left right channel right here. So we have the top capsule active and the XLR port. Now with this setup, you obviously can't hear anyone. You can't hear yourself and you can't hear anyone on the clubhouse call or on the phone call because we don't have the headphones connected. And to change that, we now want to plug those in to the headphone port right here on the side of the H5. And now you can actually monitor anything coming from the XLR ports down here, as well as what is coming from your smartphone back into the H5. And then you hear that on the headphones. But there is one catch. And that is that as of right now, with this setup, the people in the clubhouse call also would hear an echo of whatever you are hearing from them as well. So a person on a phone call, for example, would hear themselves talking as well. And that is where the feature of a mix minus actually comes into play. And that is actually something that we can set up with the Zoom H5 by using the pan feature to put something left or right onto the output ports of the line out or the headphone out. And to do that, we actually will go into the settings right here. So we will hit the menu button on the H5 there we can go to in and out. Here we have to go to the lowest setting and there we will find, or one of the lowest, that is the monitor mixer. And this is a setting where we can actually decide where something should be output, whether it should be on the left ear or on the right ear. And that is important because with an additional cable, and we'll talk about that in a second, you'll actually be able to just send the audio on one of the two ear cups to the room in your clubhouse. 
So in this case, for example, the audio that is coming here into the mix of the stereo capsule at the top right here, and that is the LR on the list right there, we can actually just hit enter there. And now here you will see the default setting is center. So left and right will get equal amounts of the sound coming from this cable. But if we change that and go enter there, and then we go all the way up to 100% on the left, that means that the audio will only be audible on the left ear cup. So we go down to the 100% and hit enter there, hit menu, and now we can go to the other one. And here you can leave it as center. And this is actually important because with center again, you can manage where you want to hear more of this. And in this case, it would make sense to just leave it at center because you want to leave it at both ear cups. And now with this setup, we are actually already done with the mix minus settings on the device. However, you will have to add a couple more things. And that is for one, this stereo split cable so that you have a stereo input on this side and then two mono outputs on the other side. And we have to basically plug this in between the line out port here. So this is the line out port on the Zoom H5. And now we want to use here the right side. So red is usually the right side and we plug that in right there. And now we have the audio coming out of the line out on the right side and that is going back into the iRig and with that back into your phone. That means that we just set this audio right here to be only on the left ear, but with this it is not on the right ear. So it means that it's not coming out of this right hand side audio signal from this port. So that is how you make a mix minus feature for your phone call. Now the problem on this device specifically and maybe also similar devices is that actually the headphone port right here, which is on the H5, this green port right there, this actually will take exactly the same settings that we just set as the line out port. So that means right now you would only hear the audio coming from your phone on the left ear cup. And to change that, I actually have this little stereo to mono jack adapter. And if we just plug that in there and then plug it into the headphone port again, now it actually is on both ear cups again because it basically just combines the left and right hand side and you will get that on both ear cups. If you wanted to, you could actually use this to basically be able to monitor your own audio on one ear cup and then on the other ear cup, you can have the audio coming from your phone call or your clubhouse room or similar things. That is of course a possibility. If you then also write channel only the stuff that is coming in on the XLR port right there. So that's something where you have pretty much endless opportunities to change around and experiment a little bit. Now I do want to mention a couple more settings that I would make for this type of setup. And for that, we can go back into the menu, go to in and out, and I would actually go up to the settings up here and to the comp limiter as well as the low cut settings. And in this case, for a setup like this, especially if you want to do these like phone call stuff and similar things with microphones, I'm not talking about integrating music because that's a different story. But with microphones and your voice, you might just want to use a low cut filter here, for example, with 80 Hertz, simply to just remove a couple of the rumblings of handling a microphone and stuff like that. So that would be a good idea. And then of course, also going back to the compressor limiter, I would go and set this also to have a limiter, probably something like a either a compressor for vocals or a limiter for general use. So for the purpose of doing these live mixes for Clubhouse or phone calls and stuff like that, that might be a good idea. A couple more settings that I find important is in the rec area, I would set the recording format to 48 kilohertz and 24 bit. That is important. And I would also go all the way down to rec mode and there it is important to select recording in multi-file mode. The reason for this is that if you select multi-file, you will actually get one file for each of the XLR ports and one file for the top port here in a stereo mix. And if you also selected the left right backup track, you would also get that from the top right here. So you would get actually four files. Now, if you only select the stereo file, you will only get what is coming out of the ports right here as a mix down recorded to the device. And that of course, in this case, 
has only one of the stuff on the left side and the other stuff on the right side, and you don't really want that. If you want to do podcast editing, you want the multi-file selected so that you can do any adjustments later on, make stuff louder or less loud, as well as adding effects and EQing. So that is very important. Now, with all of that set up, I totally understand that this is not a setup for everyone, and it is including a lot of other things that you might not have at home and would have to purchase extra. However, if you have an audio recorder like the H5, for example, and you don't want to switch over to another audio recorder that has this type of phone call integration built in, like the Zoom P4 or the Rodecaster Pro, then this might be a good solution for you to upgrade your current setup and also be able to hear yourself and, of course, also integrate your sound or your good sound from your proper microphone into something like Clubhouse Rooms or any type of live streaming that you might want to do on your phone, let's say Instagram, for example. So this is the full setup. If it's not working, make sure you have connected everything correctly and also check your settings on the H5. Lastly, it is also important to check that you have the FX selected here on the iRig 2 because otherwise you're also going to send a echo into the room. Now that setup is finished, but it's of course still extensible. For example, you could also use this port right here or even the stereo input at the top right there if you were to use the sounds coming from your phone and plug those in to one of the XLR ports, then you could actually plug in a DJ mixer pult at the top right here to be able to record that and also stream that live onto your phone. So there are a lot of options with this setup. Now, if you have any questions about this setup or anything was unclear, please leave a comment down below and I'm gonna try to answer you there or make a video specifically about your question. If this video was helpful, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you wanna learn more about these types of setups, I will have a couple links in the description below as well as up here showing at the end of this video. And with all of that said, I hope you have an amazing day. Make your setup sound great and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.